Okay, so starting off in an empty folder and just verifying that we have the latest poetry version. And I have two plugins installed the multi project plugin and the polylith plugin. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to run the poetry init function to get some help in creating that configuration, the Pi project Tom. I'm just going to step through this quickly. So I have my project file. I'm going to add a readme because I know that things will not work otherwise. I'm going to fix this later. So I'm going to also specify that I want my virtual environment in this folder and not stored uh, globally, uh, which is the default, because I'm getting a little bit better editor support. Okay, so let's do some polylith stuff. I'm going to create a workspace. So what uh, happened now is that I have a bunch of folders, components, bases, projects, and a development folder. I'll come back to that one shortly. And I also have a workspace configuration where we have where the namespace where I said should be demo is specified. So I'm going to create a component. I'm thinking about creating a, some sort of a logger. So now I have a logger folder. I have uh, both uh, the code and tests, and it is namespaced. It's a package, a package within the demo namespace. So looking at my from my editor point of view, you see that I have a core.py and an init.py. And the init is where I decide it's the interface of that component. So this is important to make all of this work. I'm going to my to my configuration. I'm going to register this new component like this namespace and uh, the package and where uh, where it can be found and this project file is for development so i just put in some example code a logger like that and i think i want to limit the access to that one just by specifying that the get logger logger function is the only thing accessible from that component so this is my development uh, configuration and I'm going to add a special file called david.py and while I'm at it I'm going to add it uh, I'm going to register it in my configuration I'll come back to this da weird david.py file uh, shortly So I have two two things specified so next up is to say to install it whoop I guess I did something wrong. I don't think I can put them in two rows like that because this isn't JSON, this is Tom. So I guess I should do something like this. Let's give it another try. Great. So Poetry has now registered my, my packages, my includes. I'm going to fire up. And I'm going to start a shell, so activate the virtual environment and start IPython. Because I want to see if this works. So I'm going to try to import the getLogger function. Seems to work. So that getLogger creates a logger, like that. So I can start log things. Hello world from a polylith component. So it's the co component that does all this. Fantastic. This works. So this is cool, but I'm going to try something else from my code editor. And I realized that I have done something wrong because I meant to have a virtual environment locally, but it still uh, created something outside. So I'm going to redo this. Yeah, so now I have a .ven file in this folder because I think I'm going to get some better editor support. So going back to my david.py, so this is my developer like playground. So from my editor, I'm firing up a, a REPL and I'm sending code to that. I don't leave my, my david.py file. I still am there and writing stuff. 
and send code to the REPL so it can be evaluated. So by doing this, I have like in uh, autocomplete and all of that good stuff that we have in our editor. You see that it throws some error because I haven't really figured out how to configure it correctly, but it works um, as expected doing this REPL driven thing. So I prefer this uh, from, uh, from starting a REPL in a terminal. So this is the configuration that does this. I have registered all my dependencies that I need to use to run my development environment. So I'm going to continue by creating a base. And a base is a special kind of component. It's usually, if you have an app, it's the endpoint on that app. So I'm going to try to develop a fast API service using the fast API framework. I'm just going to copy some code and that fast API uh, endpoint is going to use my component, my logger. So now I've created a base and the same thing, I'm going to register it in the configuration, the namespace and the package and where this one can be found. And now it's the basis folder like that. Great. You can see that I use some third party stuff and I'm going to See, uh, this is how uh, FastAPI recommends. Oh, I did something wrong again. I guess it's a bit stressful doing demos like this. So I did some typo somewhere. Yeah, equals, very important. Let's try that again. So I'm going to install a dependency through Poetry like this. So let's begin with FastAPI. And according to the FastAPI docs, we need uh, UV corn also, so also, <laughs> so I'm going to uh, add that one too. So poetry handles that and actually updates that uh, uh, project file too. So I have my two uh, external dependencies defined there too. So packages and dependencies. Next up, now I'm going to create a project because I'm 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 going to create an app. So I need some sort of definition of my project. So I'm so and um, what what should be in this project uh, folder is, is not code. It's only configuration and like infrastructure stuff. So this is my project based configuration. The the one at the top where we uh, added all the things before is the development configuration. Okay? So for each project you have a, a unique configuration. So I'm going to add everything that is needed for this project to, to, to run. So in this case, it's the logger because uh, my, you know, if you remember my endpoint, fast API endpoint used, used that one. And I'm going to include, of course, the endpoint itself, the fast API base. And this is important. You, as you can see, I'm referencing it uh, relatively because I'm two steps down now in, in the hierarchy and the components and bases are up there. So I'm just going to copy these third-party dependencies into my project-based configuration like that. So I think I have everything set up now. So and then this is very exciting. I'm going to navigate to my uh, project folder and run the Pro Poetry build project command and it has actually created a distribution uh, a package a wheel and an estis and if we have a little peek in it you see that it's it has put all my the my code in in an, in a namespaced hierarchy fantastic so what I'm going to do now I'm going to because I want to be able to run that fa fast API app somewhere and uh, a common thing is to run it in Docker. So I have it prepared with a Docker file. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy the wheel, the package uh, that I pack, uh, uh, built, and install that one into Docker. And then I have my endpoint, uh, which is the app. So let's build this uh, Docker image. Oh, this is so exciting. And I hope this works. No errors. And let's run it. Oh, that went fast. So according to the fast API docs, you should run it from localhost and slash docs. 
because fast API will create a, an open API specification. Let's run it. It works. So I'm running my, my polylith generated uh, project from uh, from in, in docker let's because I used that logger I want to see what happens you see my fast API logger so this is the component that actually did this so looking back we have bases we have components and we have projects sorry we have development of course also and projects so this is a, a very clean separation of the different parts and we can reuse components in several projects. And that's it.